Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today's conversation is going to be around hard work, the value of hard work in a cryptocurrency world. Uh, I saw your comments on the last video. I appreciate that. Right now, I was watching a video the other day about this girl who started a drop shipping store. She tried to work a job. The girl's not even 20 years old. And she's like, I couldn't work this job. So she started a drop shipping store. Made $70,000. Put the $70,000 in the stock market. The stock market zoomed on her. Her $70,000 turned to two ninety. dollars she, took, she sold her stock and she bought a house, $400,000 house, put $200,000 down. And she's working her drop. She ain't even 20 years old. So in today's world, this young girl was able to accomplish what many people can't do in 10 years. And it is appealing it is alluring, but it ain't sustainable. Like I had someone that was saying, hey, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with buying Dogecoin. I have seen the Dogecoin millionaires. And here's something that you left out of your comment. This one guy who became a Dogecoin millionaire put in $180,000. What we've been talking about on these channels the average American don't even have $5,000, let alone $180,000. The thesis is the rich get richer. He already had $180,000. He made a good bet and he got more money. If you invest $1,000 in Dogecoin when it was like nine cents, you would be at $12,000. There is a big difference between throwing in a little money like, uh, I'm just, I'm here to say, the early days of Bitcoin are over, where you could throw in 80 cents and then, then turn it into millions. Um, but I'm getting off track. Right now, you're seeing a group of people on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, with remarkable and stunning success investing in cryptocurrency, investing in the stock market and doing things. And they're not really working hard. They're enjoying life. They're making money. And you're being hit over the head with that. And here I am saying, hey, work hard, get a second job, save your money. And that just ain't as appealing. It just ain't. And I'm getting ready to tell you what's going to happen right now following up on the video uh, the other day this is not going to be going on forever i did the research if you've been in the stock market for the last 30 years including the last 10 your gains was 6.8 percent now if you were just in the stock market the last 10 years your gains was 13 percent so at some point, all of this is going to change. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of people who have become addicted to the way things are now. And this is when the carnage, this is when the damage, this is when the um, reality is going to set in. Not a minute before, right now, you got people talking about Dogecoin, which was created as a joke. There are no underlying cryptocurrency fundamentals for Dogecoin, none, none. So during this phase, um, during this phase, I, I got some advice for you. You're going to see even more stories you're going to see even um, more fantastical events. You're going to see more of this. And essentially, you're gonna have, once again, 
I'll say another day, you're gonna have to be mentally strong because what's coming, what is coming? Like right now, people are living in an alternate universe. Remember Superman in Bizarro? If you don't know, Superman has an alter ego called Bizarro who can actually hold kryptonite. And we're in a bizarro world right now. And right now, um, people are actually getting away without doing the hard work, making a lot of money. And one of the things you have got to understand, this is not sustainable. It is not sustainable to have millions of people in homes not paying their mortgage. At some point, real market port, real market plate, market force fundamentals are going to kick in. Like, I don't know, maybe this happened to you. You ever been in a period where you didn't have a job and everyone was like, Man, that is sucks. That's so sorry for you. But the longer you're in that situation, the sympathy wears thin. People just like, oh, man, you need to get a job. You need to, you know, kind of like what's going on with uh, COVID. People are over the coronavirus. I went out the other day and I saw a bunch of people in a restaurant with no mask on. It's like, hey, there ain't, there ain't no, there ain't no Rona. Mm -mm. And um, the longer something goes on, even if it's adverse, the more people don't care. Just don't simply don't care. And um, what I feel in this alternate universe, this alternate universe, um, where things are not what they seem, where things are not what you would expect them to be, you're going to have to hold on. And it's gonna be hard, like I said the other day, it's gonna be hard because you're going to see like, uh, I'm gonna be honest, when I saw this kid, she's a kid, she ain't even 20 years old, she managed to pull off in two years what literally took me seven years to do. And I was like, how in the hell is this even right? But it is. So right now, uh, I would say participate in the fuckery. But also keep a foot grounded in reality because if you become like this person, uh, this guy, he put $180,000 in Dogecoin. Now, he caught it on the upside. Now, what if Dogecoin crashes? <clears throat> I don't know what he bought it at, but if it goes below what he bought it at, he loses money. So <clears throat> right now, there is an anthem, there is a battle cry against hard work. I'm seeing it. There's a, I'm getting ready to do a reaction video to this girl, like the title of the video is Retire in Eight Years. She's 31, except <clears throat> she ain't retiring in eight years. She's retiring in 18 to 20 years. This is the clickbait type stuff that I see. Because, you, you know, she's like, I'm 31 and I want to retire when I'm 40. So that's eight years. Trick, you've been working for 11 years. Add the 11 years to the eight years, that's 19 years. But that doesn't sound as good as retiring eight years. And I'm getting ready to start doing some stuff because here's one of the big issues 
And these videos get a lot of views because they leave out the hard work, they leave out the numbers, they leave out the pain. Right now, we got people who don't want to deal with any pain. Everyone wants to um, retire early. Everyone wants to avoid work. I'm consistently seeing people talk about, um, I don't want to work no more. I want to retire. I want to have absolute control of my time, which I can feel. I can feel, I can understand that. But what you're seeing is a frenzy because uh, there was uh, a teenager on Quorum, Q-U-O-R-A.com. And he was like, I'm 18, I don't want to work. How do I get a million dollars and invest it so I don't have to work? These are the questions that people are asking as if getting a million dollars is easy. Going back to this girl, um, I was watching some of her videos and there's a little clickbaity and there's a little, um, she lying a little bit cause she's like, I did this at 19, I did this at 18. And the timelines, then you know, I, I listen to stuff like that. But even with her making fifty thousand a month, and she actually did a real video, her drop shipping store made fifty thousand, but her profit was like twelve. So kudos to her for actually giving the real number. So. You know, when I watch these videos, I watch them from the vantage point of a person who has actually built businesses, made a lot of money, and little details like that, I be on them. So she's doing a little clickbaity stuff, but she's also mixing it with truth, which is what's working for her. But one of the things that you have to understand, and this is, this is really for you know people my age who grew up in the world where you had to work your way up the ladder that no longer exists you don't have to work your way up your up a ladder you don't have to do any of that uh you don't have to work your way up a ladder you don't i mean here's a girl who is her birthday, I think she's gonna be 20 this summer. And she has built cash flow, because her YouTube channel makes like 25,000 a month and her business, so she's got cash flow of $50,000 per month. And she ain't even 20 years old. That is an incredible accomplishment for anyone, let alone someone who ain't even 20 years old. $500,000 per month, $600,000 a year, cash flow. And th this, is, this is something else too, there's a YouTube narrative. Even though she's making all this money, she's house hacking. She bought a house, even though she could easily afford to live on her own, she has two roommates, so she's living for free. And I know where she got that ideal from. And we've come into a strange place. <clears throat> now I'm gonna say, um, I'm making $10,000 a month. I am not living with anyone. That's just me. Uh, for her to make that kind of money and have roommates. Also, this is where age, because I guarantee you when she's 30, she ain't going to be doing that. I'm going to tell you why. Because uh, she's a girl, she's going to get a boyfriend, and that ain't going to work her doing double monkey backflips all over her boyfriend with her roommates. 
and this, this is something I've seen with YouTubers. Uh, they'll split the cost, they'll get a roommate, <clears throat> but they're all very, very young. I'll tell you something that was funny. When you're young, certain things don't bother you. I was in the military in a room with three male roommates. And we used to bring our girlfriends in and we used to, we had the lockers walled off where each, it was like little cubicles, right? And we had no problem bringing our girlfriends over there, having sex, because we were young. There ain't no way in hell I would do that now. So a lot of what you see is based upon youth <clears throat> and where they are in life. I guarantee you, when this chick is 30, she's not gonna have roommates. She's going to like, you know, I, I, I have a feeling she's gonna be making even way more money. And it's like, I'm making this kind of money. Well, I got roommates. See, right now, it is part of a YouTube narrative. It is part of the um, get over economy. Like, there was a guy, went to school, called the Dave Ramsey Show. I make $400,000. I got over $100,000 saved in the bank. Should I pay off my student loans or should I wait until government forgives my student loans? There is a new kind of mentality in people in this part of the get over economy. I got, I make $400,000 a year and I am still looking for someone to save me. I am still looking for someone to pay my student loans. See, I'm from the old school that if I engage in a contract with you, I'm gonna keep my end of the deal. That doesn't exist with this younger group of folks. If they can get out of an obligation, they're gonna get out of an obligation, even if they got the money to pay it. Me, that's a lot of feminine energy. That's a lot of feminine energy where you want someone to, uh, like I said, it's feminine energy. I had a friend and we got into it because my friend, he made good money. Two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. He had a wife. She made 90. Guess what she did with her money? Whatever she wanted. He was like, I'm the man, I pay the bills. My wife, she does what she wants with her money. I was like, so effectively, you, you're living with a child. And we kind of got into it, because I was like, look, dude, you should be taking her money, using that money for investments. She shouldn't be tricking off of you like this. And we got into it. Because, once again, that's why it's feminine energy. It is a woman's mind that if I got someone else who's paying the bills, I should be able to do whatever I want with my money, regardless of how much money I'm making. Regardless of how much money I'm making. And we have a lot of men with a feminine mindset. A mindset that's not rooted in responsibility, that's not rooted in leadership, that's not rooted. I mean, like I said, um, right now, it's going to be crazy for a while. This, this is not going to end tomorrow. And I was like listening to this phone call. I make $400,000, got the money to pay off my student loans. But if the government can save me and see th this is a subtle difference, uh, in generations, this new generation is to get over generation. I don't want to work if I can get out of working. And this is why millennials, millennials are pushing cryptocurrency so hard because it represents not having to work. And it's all about freedom. It's all about being free. And this is a corrosive mindset from a social standpoint. You heard of the Roman Empire, right? When did the Roman Empire crumble? During times like this, when the Roman 
population got to the point where it became extremely self-indulgent and the society just collapsed. That's where we're heading. We have people who don't want to take responsibility. We don't have people, we have men who don't want to lead. We have people who don't want to pay their obligations even if they have the money. We're living in a very strange world. Socialism. Um, we're going to be American socialism. Two years, three years, it's going to be on the books. And it used to be, I'm an American. I'm going to work. I'm going to take care of myself. I don't want anything that that attitude's gone. That attitude is gone. Uh, once again, this dude, you can go ahead and watch Dave Ramsey's show. I make $400,000 a year. And should I pay off my student loans or should I wait to the government to rescue me? I mean, someone from my generation never would have made that phone call. Never would have made that phone call. And this is the corrosive narrative that is happening in America. The get over economy, the get over mindset. If I can somehow get someone else to pay for this or I can get out of this. And this is why um, people are gravitating towards these YouTube channels that literally teach you how to scam or how to take advantage of people. Like they're, they're, I'm not naming names, but there's a YouTube channel where a dude is literally talking about scamming people and it's blowing up, you know? So for those of you who are working hard and I saw your comment where it was like, I'm working these two jobs and I'm just like, why? Because everyone else is, they ain't work. I mean, I understand you, bro. I understand. It's going to be hellified annoying for you to have your head down, for you to be building your business, for you to be working hard, and you got all these other folks who are footloose and fancy free, drinking mimosas at lunch, not working, not saving money, not doing the right thing. And this is where, stay with me, stay with me. In a few years, you're gonna be laughing your asses off at these people. Right now, they are living the life. They're living the life. They're getting away with murder. I mean, who the thunk we would be in a society where you don't have to pay your mortgage, you don't have to pay your car payment, you don't have to pay your credit card payments, and the government's giving you money. I mean, for low production people, um, this is a utopia. This is utopian times for those kind of people. It's like, I don't have to be responsible and I'm not going to suffer any negative consequences for being irresponsible. Hope, hot damn. And I'm like, I know it like, understand when I saw this girl's videos, and I saw what she was able to accomplish because we're living in an alternate universe. I was a little salty. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, what the? And she's making, I was like, good Lord. And I'm seeing this all over the internet. I am seeing people who are making the kind of money that I make without the work. And it's just like, all right, G, you got, you got two choices here. You can continue to do what you're doing and know in the long term you're going to be better off and you can ignore these people or you can just be pissed off every morning. I mean, like, I'm just sitting here, you know, like um, with YouTube. If you noticed, it is typically a white person that gets picked. There are a few black folks who make it, but the majority of the picked 
YouTube algorithm are white people. And I got a, I got a theory on that. Who designed the YouTube algorithm? White people, Indians, and Asians. And I feel that their hidden biases went into creating the YouTube algorithm because I'm just sitting there like, I'm watching these videos, right? And I'm like, there ain't nothing special about this video. I will say there are some YouTubers who do damn good job, a lot of creativity, they work really hard, and I understand why these videos take off. But when the YouTube algorithm picks you, you can do a video talking about, I'm eating my toast today, and it, it'll get a million views. Because like I said with the Graham Stephan, I have put on my YouTube, I don't want his content, I'm not watching it, and it keeps recommending it, and it keeps pushing it on my homepage. So when you get picked by the YouTube algorithm, your content doesn't have to be special or remarkable. No, no, and I, I consistently see this with white people. I'm just sitting there like, consistently see it, and I go through the comments, and with this chick, she got picked. The chick's got like 15, 20 videos, over 100,000 subscribers, 25,000 a month YouTube revenue, and she got picked. And I went through her comments, and guess who's? 13, 14, 15 year olds are watching her. So they've pushed her content to these young people. It's very interesting. It is very, very interesting. So one of the things that I am in the middle of is like, I know how to make money. I know what to do to make money. And it puts me in conflict with myself because like right now, this month, I'm gonna take this month to reset my car business. Uh, all of my cars for hire car are rented. They don't come back. Uh, I've had some stuff with Toro and I'm like going to just take a moment, pause, and then come back stronger in June while I sort some stuff out because it is annoying. It is beyond annoying to see someone who ain't working as hard as you are who's enjoying the same benefits. It is hellified annoying. And I have to be, I have to take my own advice, y'all. I got to be mentally strong because I know, and this is one of the vantage points of being an older guy. I've seen this before. And I know it ain't gonna last long. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I know it's not gonna last long. Like right now, it is crazy. It is beyond stimulating what is going on in the economy. And it, it's like you were, you went to sleep and you woke up the world was 100% different. That's kind of what it's like for me. And um, I know, it, I, I like y'all, I know it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be really, really hard for you guys to stay the course, to keep doing what you need to do while all these other folks are not working like, they're not working as hard as you are. They're not. And they're getting benefits and they're living their life and they're enjoying themselves and they're taking vacation and they're doing all of this stuff. And understand that you wanna keep working hard for this one valid reason. If you lose your ability to work hard, it's gonna catch up with you at some point in your life. Like uh, I have people who are questioning, it's like, man, you got this, you doing this, why do the car business, it's gonna be hard. Absolutely, 100%. It is going to be hard. It's going to be a challenge. But I am still wired where I can do hard work. I am still capable of doing hard work 
because storage auction business, that wasn't nothing but hard work. Buying units, unloading units, marketing, selling. I was working my ass off and you know what? I enjoyed it because I remember there was some nights I would get home and I would sit on the bed, right? And I would lean back and I would wake up in the morning with my clothes and shoes still on. And I was just like, whoa, what happened? I was, have you ever been so tired that as soon as your head hits the pillow, you are out? And that is some of the best sleep I've ever had in my life. I never had insomnia. Uh, after the heart attack, I did have some of that. And what was I doing? Laying around doing nothing. I had insomnia. I couldn't eat. I lost a lot of weight. And it was one of the roughest periods of my life because I wasn't being productive. Uh, the week that I actually bought eight cars and got all that information, I went to bed at eight o'clock on, on this Friday night because I was tired. And it's some of the best sleep ever. I don't have to take no pills. I don't need no sleeping aids. Other than my heart medication stuff, I ain't on the drugs. I don't need any of that stuff because when you work hard, when you understand the benefits of hard work, when you, um, you just don't need that stuff, man. And I remember, because essentially I am grateful that even though I have money, I still have the ability to work hard. You know what that means? I'm always going to have money. I'm always going to have money. I am 54 years old. I'll be 55. I'll be doing the speed limit this year, right? And I still have the ability to outwork young people, especially this new group of young people. Because at some point, the world is going to go back to normal. And when this happens, all of these Dogecoin, cryptocurrency, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook people are not going to be able to compete. Essentially, you see it on YouTube. What happens to someone who's doing van life and they start getting this YouTube money? Uh, there's two guys who are getting YouTube money who, who choose to remain in the vans because they like living in vans. Uh, Bob Wells at RV Wellness, RV Living, Bob Wells, uh, he's making $10,000, $12,000 a month YouTube. He chooses to live in the van because he likes it. That is Bob Wells. And there's other guy, Van City Life. He likes it. He's making YouTube money, but he, he lives in the van, him and his dog, because he likes it. Now, the majority of these, you, these YouTubers, uh, Janelle and Alfredo, after she started getting that money, she stopped staying in that van so much. And a lot of these van life dwellers, when they started getting that money, they got a house. But once again, age, like this girl who's making all this money and has roommates, when she's 30, she will not do that. She ain't gonna do that. Even if she ain't making that much money, she ain't gonna do it. So part of this is you've driven because uh, you will see a lot of these young guys Four or five, like there was another guy, he moved to California and they rented this amazing house and there was four of them in this house and they were all under 30. And then one got 20, he, got, he turned 30. And guess what he did? He went back to St. Louis, back to his old apartment where he lived by himself. This is coming, I'm here to tell you, like right now, you cannot, look at these young people as a indicator of the future because they're still developing as people. They're still growing as people. They're still, you know, becoming people. So these are not people that you can look to for future reference. But going back to my conversation with the fall of the Roman Empire, socialist nation, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm just like stumped 
When this guy called the Dave Ramsey show and was like, I make $400,000, should I pay off my student loans or should I wait until the government pays them off for me? Different kind of mindset, different kind of mentality. And this, like, your grandfather never would have made that call. Your dad would have never made that call. Never made that call. I'm just sitting there like, really? And this is the get over economy personified. Now, there is someone, city slicker, who keeps leaving all these comments because he don't want to work hard. He wants some of this easy money. And when you see so many people out here getting this easy money, it rewires your brain. And this is harmful. I'm going to keep working hard. I'm not going to submit. I am not going to be seduced by the easy money. And right now, there's easy money out there. There's a lot of easy money out there. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to learn any new skills. You just have to apply yourself to this little hack and boom, you know, you can just make this easy money. And that's going to be dangerous because once again, I got videos that talk about this. Once you learn how to make money a certain way, it becomes very hard for you to learn how to make money a new way. Look at the number of Google athletes who committed crimes, former athletes who committed crimes. Because they got used to that taste. They got a taste of that good life. And they could not go back to being a normal person. So they started committing crime versus actually going out and getting a normal job. Because here's the thing. If you're doing a job right now, right? And you're making 100K for doing your job. And they came to you and they said, look, uh, company's suffering. We need to cut your salary 50%. What you gonna do? You gonna quit. Cause you, you just cannot conceive doing the same job for 50% less. You're gonna quit. You gonna like, I'm out of here. I'm rolling out. And this is what happens to these athletes, these rappers, Funny story, remember when Fantasia had her show and her brother was living with her? Because her brother was in close orbit to Fantasia's world. He went to the Lambo dealership and drove a Lamborghini. Even though he had no way to afford that car. But because he was in that proximity, he was in that world, he wanted those privileges. And Fantasia went off on me like, why are you driving this car? You can't afford that. I'm not buying you that car. And this is, this is right now you have because of social media, stick with me. You have a lot of people who are in proximity of wealth and they feel that they can get this life without doing the work, without being that person because they're in proximity. And it, it's, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. But I know the next, the rest of the year is gonna be rough. Next, it's gonna be rough. I understand it's gonna be hard for you to keep doing what you're doing because you're living in the house and you're working, you're paying your mortgage, your neighbor on the left is in forbearance, your neighbor on the right ain't even in forbearance, but because they're not foreclosing, it's like he's in forbearance, and they ain't working. They cooking steaks on the patio at night after you come home from a hard day of work and you like, what the hell? So I, I'm gonna keep having these conversations to kind of keep y'all motivated because it's gonna be hard, even me. When I saw this girl and I was just like, ah, I was hot. I was like, wait a minute. And there, this is just to prove to you there's so much information that literally this girl did it. And she's also foreign. She's an immigrant. That's another part of it. She's an immigrant. And um, how many 15-year-olds 
because she started this when she was 15 and she was on she said that first year i made no money i lost money i was working this little job and the money i was making from this job went to this business and it was just she bought her education she paid for education that year and then the next year she made seventy thousand. and then she put it in the stock market stock market took off then she bought a house and then she grew her business and she ain't even 20 years old she ain't even 20 years old and you know we live in a world of accelerated success i will say i was uh, i was i was I, I i i got a taste of it came on youtube 2009 2010 62,000 2011 92,000 2012 1.5 million three years so I was a party to accelerated internet success last year it happened again and um but I put myself in that position by having these YouTube channels. But I want you guys to understand there is value, there is nobility in working hard. And it's going to serve you well in the future. I understand you're going to see all types of foolishness. I mean, it's just gonna be hard, y'all. I'm gonna be here to keep you motivated and you know be very transparent because like when I saw that this girl had accomplished this in like two years like a year really it, it, it took her one year I was like and also uh, she put down half and you wanna know why she put down half because she's self-employed and she she's in Canada so I don't, I know in America that wouldn't have worked. In America, they would have required two years tax returns in America. So thank, you know, she's in Canada. So that's another wrinkle, but stick with me y'all. I know the next few years are going to be rough. I know you're going to be going on your job, working your business and you got your neighbors who ain't, they ain't go, they're going to be, part of this socialist America. They ain't paying their mortgages, they're not paying their car payments, and they're out every night grilling steak, shrimp, corn, drinking mimosas, keeping you up because they don't have to get up and go to work. They don't have to get up to go to work. Funny thing, um, the Porsche broke down. So, that is, you know, because I'm selling the Porsche. I'm selling the Range Rovers. I may keep the BMW. I might sell that. I don't know. But I'm getting rid of the, the, the money hogs because uh, the Porsche is at my repair place. And I don't even know how much it's going to cost to get this fixed. And I'm just like, I, I've, ha I've not had these cars two weeks. And two of the four cars have broken down already. That doesn't bode well. Where the Acuras, I, I'm not even heard a peep out of them. So while I was in the parking lot waiting for the tow truck, I was in Decatur. And I noticed something. I had three young black men walk by me and they all had slides on. All of them. And they all had, I was just sitting there like, how come all these dudes have shoes on? They all had slides. And this is a cultural thing. And I'm just sitting there like, really? Really? Um, so you're seeing the de-evolution of masculinity with that. Right now, like this guy who called Dave Ramsey, talking about I make 400000 me and my wife, and I'm looking for the government to pay off my student loans. That is the abandonment of masculinity. 
That is the abandonment of leadership. And I'm thinking about bringing the uh, man channel back, but with a different tone, a different um, purpose and intent, because right now we have a bunch of beta male followers, beta male cucks who are not leaders, who are not trying to build anything. I mean, this whole thing, how can you be for red pill or MGTOW and be talking about generational wealth? Who are you gonna leave the money to? Who are you gonna leave the money to? I mean, and also, since I refuse to talk about certain topics on this channel, I'm never gonna talk about certain topics on this channel, and I'm not gonna talk about certain topics on uh, Savage Finance, because those channels, uh, I, like Savage Finance is growing. Savage Finance is growing because I'm never going to do a social media topic on Savage Finance. You're not going to get that from me on there. And that's why it's growing. Because people can come there and get financial advice and not into all of this crazy stuff. And I have seen many black YouTubers I have not seen white YouTubers in the personal finance space do that. But many black YouTubers will chime in on a Derrick Jackson or a Kevin Samuels or some BS like that. And the audience is like, I ain't come here for that. I ain't come here for that. So I'm probably going to start another YouTube channel where I can talk about these issues and stuff. Um, probably bring back the editing team um, and you know my best video on Savage Finance I edited it myself there was no editing team on that so it's going to be really because uh, like this whole month well a third of this month has gone by already um, so I'm going to reset the car business. I'm going to reset some training. Thinking of starting the man's channel and some other things. So with that, you, if you want to be part of the art of holding the corporate toolbox family, go below that links below and uh, the price hasn't gone up and we're going to get into some more conversations and training. A lot more conversations and training. So that's all I got for you guys today. I will talk to you in the next video.